Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a quick one on cardiac tamponade. I think it's a very important topic and we're going to be covering the basics. I've linked a couple videos in the description of this video in order to help you understand some of the finer details and I'm just going to be going over mostly just the basics. Okay, so what is cardiac tamponade? Well, it's an abnormal accumulation of fluid in the pericardial space. So basically, it's a type of pericardial effusion, which is when the pericardial space gets over 30 to 50 milliliters of fluid. So you might be asking yourself, what is this pericardial space? Where is it? Why should I care? So the pericardial space, if we go through the layers of the heart here, here we have the endocardium, the myocardium. Now here, there's the serous pericardium. So this is a kind of a folded membrane. And there's two layers. There's a visceral, which is closer to the heart, and a parietal, which is attached to your fibrous pericardium out here. Now, in between these two layers of the serous pericardium, there's, a, there's some fluid. This lubricates the heart and allows it to move easily in the pericardial sac. So this fluid can build up in cases of trauma or infection and actually compress the heart. As you can see here, the heart is being compressed. So right here is where we get the buildup of fluid. And you can see it in this diagram over here on the left. So there are a couple uh, key things that happen in cardiac tamponade. So pericardial effusion also happens to be fluid filling up this area, but cardiac tamponade is when this fluid becomes obstructive to blood flow. So it's gonna be crushing your heart. There are cases when this fluid builds up gradually over time and it's not critically dangerous except for when it builds up to massive amounts, like one or two liters. But if it builds up very quickly, the fibrous pericardium doesn't have time to expand and accommodate, so it's essentially crushing your heart and not allowing proper circulation. And of course, if you can't push out blood from your heart, your visceral organs are going to become hypoxic, and your brain is not going to have enough oxygen, and that's very critical, and you might die. So there are three key symptoms for car cardiac tamponade, and they are called Beck's triad. Uh, and I'm going to be going through them one by one, and you'll see why they happen. So first is JVD, or jugular venous distension. Okay, so the jugular veins feed into the right atrium. So here I'm just going to draw a quick heart, very simplistically. So here's our right atrium, and our jugular veins are going to go from our, into our superior vena cava and feed into our right atrium. So when your heart is being crushed or compressed by all this fluid building up, this right atrium isn't going to have as much space to allow for filling. So all this blood from the superior vena cava is going to get backed up and your jugular veins are going to become super full and kind of rigid. And you'll see them on a patient with a cardiac tamponade or any kind of heart compression. So jugular venous distension is because our right heart is being compressed and the blood is backing up into our systemic venous circulation. Okay, next, muffled heart sounds. Well, that's a little obvious. All this fluid around the heart is going to not allow the heart sounds to be as clear, so they'll be muffled. Then we have decreased blood pressure. That's also pretty obvious. Well, when you have decreased, when your heart is shrunken into this compressed bag, it's not going to be able to pump out as much uh, blood. So, let's say your diastolic volume, which is when the when the heart fills and the volume is at max it's not going to be as high because it has all this pressure going inside. So your diastolic volume drops. That means your cardiac output is lower. Next, we have our pulsus paradoxus. So pulsus paradoxus also happens on top of Beck's triad. I'm going to try my best to explain it. There's a video in the description that uh, might be a little clearer or a little more helpful. So regularly, when someone is going to take an inhaled breath, the pressure inside your thoracic cavity. So here's an x-ray of the thorax and you can see uh, cardiac tamponade in here, but just ignore that for a second. So regularly when you have a, a inhaled breath, your intrathoracic pressure is going to drop because your lungs have expanded um, and your thoracic cavity has become larger. So there's a larger void, the pressure drops. This allows for not only the inhalation of air, but now causes a couple uh, side effects on the heart. Well, this causes the systemic circulation to want to fill the heart because now there's more space, the blood wants to fill the empty space, the negative pressure draws in blood to the heart. This is going to draw in blood to the right side of the heart. Now this blood is going to go straight to the right ventricle 
and fill it up more than it regularly would. So you inhale, your right ventricle gets filled up a little quicker than it regularly would if you're, let's say, exhaling, right? This uh, increased filling causes the intraventricular septum to deviate towards the left now, okay? So now it's pressing on the left ventricle. What does this cause? Okay, so your left ventricle is less full now because your right ventricle got overfilled. Left ventricle is less full, so the output of the left ventricle is a little less. So this causes your systolic pressure, which is the pressure caused by the left ventricle, to drop. It'll drop around one to nine millimeters of mercury. If it drops any, large, any more than this, it's pathologic. There's also another cause to this uh, drop in systemic, systolic blood pressure, which is your lungs have now expanded, right? And the blood vessels in there have expanded so they can accommodate more blood. So less blood will actually be returning to the heart or the left heart. So the left heart takes in blood from the lungs, right? So less blood is going to return to the left heart and that means it's going to pump out less blood. So the right heart is going to be pushing on the interventricular septum, decreasing the volume of the left heart, and the left heart is also going to be receiving less blood. Both of these cause a redu reduction in systolic blood pressure. Now, that's normal. So normally on inspiration, that does happen. In the case of cardiac tamponade though, this decrease in systolic blood pressure is going to be greater than 10 millimeters of mercury because not only do we have these two uh, factors contributing, so the right, right intraventricular septum deviation, uh, sorry, the left intraventricular septum deviation from the right heart and the lower amounts of filling from the left heart, we now have pressure on the right heart. So that increases the septal deviation when, when the right heart fills more. So that this septal deviation is not gonna be like this. Let's say normally it's gonna be a lot more like this. So the, the volume of the left heart is gonna be decreased even further. So pathologic is less, uh, is a greater than 10 millimeter mercury drop in our systolic, okay? So there are a couple ca causes of cardiac tamponade and I'm gonna be talking about uh, just a few of them. So there's aortic dissection or aneurysm and heart attack. Both of these can cause bleeding into the pericardial space. And aortic dissection, that's obvious because the aorta is going to, uh, essentially there's going to be an aneurysm and it's going to pop and it's, the blood is going to fill the pericardial space. Heart attacks can weaken the heart and actually there can be a hole in the, uh, in the layers of the heart. So there can be a hole going through because of, um, let's say, necrosis or any kind of cell damage, and then blood can fill into here. So there's blood leaking from inside the heart. And now these two are very important because these can't be treated with pericardiocentesis. You're gonna to have to add additional treatment measures. And we'll talk about pericardiocentesis in just a second. Heart surgery can cause this obviously because bleeding can happen. And um, viral infection, this can cause gathering of pus or other fluids, as well as any kinds of stab wounds to the heart these all or, tra or trauma, let's say a car crash, these can cause fluid accumulation in the pericardial cavity. So any kind of gas, um, blood clots, fluids, pus, anything that's accumulating in this pericardial space can compress the heart and cause cardiac tamponade. Now here you'll see an x-ray and this is actually something that shouldn't have been done. Um, cardiac tamponade is diagnosed at the bedside. So as soon as you see Beck's triad, you, you have a very good idea that that's cardiac tamponade and you should not be doing an x-ray because this is a medical emergency, okay? So this is actually should not have been done. Uh, so I've talked about pericardiocentesis. That's essentially uh, going in with a needle into the pericardial space and drawing out the fluid or blood that's accumulated in there. You don't wanna do that with aortic dissection or aneurysm because this blood is just gonna fill right back up and you've essentially added another hole so you're not helping the patient out one bit. So when you have a hole in the heart or a hole in a major artery that's causing this, you're drawing out the blood is not gonna do anything for the patient because it's just gonna fill back up. All right, I hope this video helped and I'll see you guys in the next one.